Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I have a little uh, addendum kind of video about the VIC-20 future-proving one that I will link in here. And I got some comments on that video uh, saying it's all nice and shiny, but um, replacing the capacitors doesn't make any sense because they were still good, which I, I, I've shown in the video how I measure these. Apparently they were still good, but um, I know that capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, um, they don't last forever, okay? And they are supposedly, the normal shelf life is about 15 years or so, that's what's written in the data sheets. Uh, so these machines are over 30 years old. So I think it's a good idea still to um, replace them. So, so much for that. I was, I was getting some comments on that. Then I was getting some comments about something I completely forgot about in the um, VIC-20 video. I wanted to make another video to elaborate on that because um, it's a crucial point, of course. And I mentioned that very prominently in the Commodore 64 video. And it is the power supply, which is um, for the older uh, VIC-20 versions that have the two-prong power supply, it's only a 9-volt transformer in there, in there, so there's not much that can go wrong there. And if something goes wrong, it's likely that the transformer just uh, burns out and you have no current flowing whatsoever. So that's not a problem for the VIC-20 at least. You have to get a new transformer and then you can uh, use it. Um, in those old models of the VIC-20, which I don't have here to show you, there are um, voltage regulators. There are these um, big ones, uh, metal can voltage regulators under the heat things, sinks that can fail and you should replace them as a preventive um, maintenance measure to assure that it, that it lasts longer. There's no voltage regulator in, in the newer models because they um, get the 5 volts and the 9 volts AC from the from the uh, power supply directly. And the 5 volts line is what gets bad on the power supplies on the original ones and uh, it just if it, if it is too high it will basically um, damage the, the ICs in here and uh, without you even noticing. So there are some ways to prevent that that I've shown in the Commodore 64 video. The, the most easy way to do it is uh, probably to buy some kind of protective device. There are a couple. I use the um, Commodore 64 saver or C64 saver. It is called uh, by Hans Biwak. You can just contact Biwak uh, on YouTube or on Twitter or elsewhere to get one of these. He makes these himself and they are very, very good. And he, um, he spent quite some time to get these just right. And I've tested them on the Commodore 64 and the Commodore Plus 4 and on the Big 20 and it works very nice and it's pretty convenient and it's just a little, this is the, the original power supply and I just plug it in here and plug this, this end into the uh, device. And it protects my computer from over voltage and from uh, too low voltages, which is also a problem because if the voltage is too low, the chips will draw too much current and will get hotter and uh, eventually fail also. So under voltage is just as bad as over voltage, so to say. The second method to prevent your um, VIC from dying of over voltage is of course to make your own power supply. I made one and I will link in the video in the corner here again. I made one for my Commodore 64, but it apparently it works fine on the VIC-20. On the new ones with the that which have the same connector, obviously, um, and it also works on the plus four that I recently got, and you're gonna see videos about, of course, but not yet. And for the Commodore 64, I also did a little hack using one of these, which are um, voltage suppressor diodes, P6KE 6.8A, and uh, what these do, you connect them over the 5 volt line, they basically become conductive at 6.8 volts, which is a voltage that the um, ICs can take. They are basically, most of them are rated at 7 volts. So 6.8 volts is okay for the ICs to survive. It's not recommended to do that, but um, they will survive. 
And uh, these basically, if it goes any higher than that, these burn and become uh, totally uh, short out the 5 volt rail so that the fuse in the power supply will blow. Which is, of course, then a very crude way of protecting the, um, the ICs, but it works. So what I'm going to do now is to open up the VIC-20 and look for a nice place to connect these. Or one of these, at least. <laughs> Another thing that uh, happened just after shooting and, and uploading the last video was um, that the little um, bridge rectifier that's in here, the original is a lot smaller, it's pretty flimsy, um, that it, it broke. And it broke in such a way that it was drawing far more power than it's supposed to. And uh, yeah, it, it was to a degree that I connected the power supply and, and switched it on and the um, power LED became, began flickering because the power supply couldn't get held, uh, hold up. And yeah, so I, I was looking for the fault quite some time and then I realized it was the little bridge rectifier that was um, going bad. And that's what they do. They go bad in, I saw them go bad in audio gear, for example, that I was repairing. Never seen one go bad in a um, in a computer yet, but uh, this just happened, and I replaced it with a with a beefier one um, that should last a bit longer, hopefully. So that's something you could also do as a preventive kind of maintenance. So that's another thing that I could add to the Vic Twenty future proving thing is to replace these. In the old on the old boards, there's also a voltage regulator, but it should be a bit bigger. So what I'm looking for is um, a spot on the five volt rail that is quite close to the um, connector or the power switch, and it has. Uh, a bit wider traces I'd say so I can can take some current before it the diode breaks otherwise the, the traces might uh, burn which is not what we want of course we want to save the computer and not uh, destroy the PCB okay let me poke around a bit and see um, where I can get the 5 volts from poke around with my multimeter so I'm using this middle pin here. Don't know if you can see that, and connect it to ground here, which is the whole ground pane. So I think that's gonna that's gonna work. So let's try that. Going to sit in there something like this, I think. And you want to make sure to not short anything out. So it's very do this very carefully. <laughs> Well, it's, yeah, there's, there's plenty of space, I guess. And I should still put a bit of insulation under there. I think I'm gonna put some, a piece of Kapton tape under there. So it's not shorting out anything. And this, is, this can take heat. This is basically heat resistant uh, uh, tape. You could probably get away by using uh, just electrical tape or something, but I have this lying around here, so I'm gonna use that. And you want to connect the um, ring side of the diode to the positive rail and the uh, not ring side to the negative, so to the ground. So that's uh, what I'm gonna try here. How professional this looks. It looks like it's made, it was made in the factory. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that later. So there we are. You can clip the leads to make it work. Okay, something like this. And you of course want to remove these. Alright. Okay, to conclude this video, I have all my uh, protection gear in place here using my self-made power supply, which is better than the original power supply because it's a switch mode power supply. Um, using BWAX C64 saver and I have the protection diode in there which I'm gonna test now. So let's see if this still works. And it does. And these using all these um, protection measures 
it's pre pretty overkill, I think. It would be enough to use um, the C64 saber, of course. The diode is rather just like a last line of defense if, if something seriously goes wrong. It's a pretty crude way of protecting, but in an effective way in the end. It's, a, it's gonna probably save your ICs from uh, dying from overvoltage. The C64 saver is much better because it also, as I mentioned, uh, prevents damage by uh, two little voltages. So yeah, that's about all I wanted to tell you this in this addendum. Hopefully some VIC-20s uh, can survive longer because uh, I'm providing information on how to do this. And I hope you enjoyed this. So see you very soon in another video. If you want to give me some support, check out my Patreon and the stuff linked in the description. Thanks for watching, I'm Jan Beta. See you next time. Bye!